Welcome, friends. Welcome to another edition of Thriving Now. I'll be your host for this edition. I'm Dr. David Kamnitzer. Christine Healy is still on special assignment. I'm very excited about today's show. Today, we'll be looking at the Enneagram, which some of you are familiar with, but we're going to be looking at it in a special light. We're going to be looking at it as a tool for transformation. And I'm very, very, very excited about this show because as many of you know, transformation is my passion. I've been a student and a teacher of transformation now for over 35 years. And what excites me so much about transformation is that it provides an access route for people to get beyond this vicious circle of concepts which determine experiences, which reinforce the concept, which reinforces the kind of experiences people have. There's that vicious circle. And transformation provides an opportunity to know yourself beyond that endless loop. And that's very exciting. But one of the things that has been missing in transformational theory and practice has been very precise, powerful ways to help people to discover their particular blind spots that keep them from accessing a more authentic self. And also, once they do access that more spacious authenticity, there's not a lot of guidance in transformational theory about helping people to discover their particular strengths and talents and gifts. And I've always had a sense that the Enneagram could do that could provide that particular uh, missing link in transformation. And yet, I hadn't quite come across a application of the Enneagram that was powerful enough and precise enough to really deliver. And now I have. And so I'm excited to share what I've discovered with you today. And I'd like to bring in and welcome my guests, uh, David and Catherine Favre. So welcome. and. Uh, David and Catherine are Enneagram experts, and Catherine is also the developer of a very exciting um, development in Enneagram theory and practice called the Tri-Type. And we'll be getting into that tonight, and I will volunteer myself as a guinea pig to, so that we can bring out the power and the magic of uh, the Enneagram and the Tri-Type, especially in the context of transformation. So uh, I'm going to turn to my guests now, and here we go. So welcome. Oh, Thank so you. happy to be here. Very all right. Good. So tonight's all about showcasing your work in the context of transformation. And so I don't know if you've ever been interviewed in that light, but I want to just open it up. And anything you'd like to say about kind of what brought you to the Enneagram and what brought you to Tritype, and also um, anything you want to say about uh, to what extent you've looked at your work in the context of transformation? I don't know. There's a lot to be said. Yeah, there. there's a lot, a lot of good questions there. I think, I mean, in brief, I was in graduate psychology school and happened to uh, become interested in the Enneagram, not through the school I was at, but uh, through a Riso and Hudson program. And I the story I've told many times is that the, the first week in their training, I felt like I had learned almost as much about human behavior as I did in three years in graduate school. Um, so for me, the system was completely transformative, to use that term, um, in terms of being able to identify with great accuracy what uh, someone's internal experience was. And that was just fascinating to me. Um, so I'm a type four. My tri-type is four, six, eight. Um, so that really began this journey, and um, a few years later, Catherine and I met and started working together. So. Maybe before we go on, so we don't lose anybody, we used a term there that is kind of specific, but we didn't define it. So maybe a quick definition of tri-type, and then we'll just continue on um, with the story. For those that are familiar with the Enneagram, they're used to identifying one key type which is our focus of attention, their habitual ways in which we respond to the world. We use our head, our heart, and our gut. And tri-type identifies your dominant Enneagram type in each center of intelligence. 
So as David said, as a four, six, eight, that means he uses his heart, which is four. He uses six as his head type, and he uses eight as his gut type. Would you okay. want to say anything more about that? Well, so let's continue the story about how you guys crossed paths with the Enneagram yes. and how, how tri-types emerged. Ah, for me personally, I've always been interested my entire life on what makes people tick. From the time I was a child and read little Dell books on everything you can imagine, I wanted to know what I could about why people do what they do. And then I found the Enneagram about 25 years ago, and I was astounded at the uh, Enneagram's ability to identify not only behaviors, but more importantly, why. And I had to learn everything I could. And then uh, 16 years ago, I decided to go through the process of certifying with anyone that would have me. And went, <laughs> <laughs> and went to every workshop, every um, program available at the time. And that's where I met David. I was, began with my first body of research because the um, certification program asked to correlate the Enneagram with something else. And I was using self-image since I had experience in that area. And I wanted to know as much as I could from the inside out. David talked about the internal experience. Well, that's what was pure gold for me. And I wanted to know that. So I attended every workshop multiple times just so that I could meet people to find that out. Okay, but let's, let's keep going. So then what happened? What? Um... So we met. Okay. And actually, we... It, <laughs> We met through Riso and Hudson, but I also um, certified with uh, Palmer and Daniels and Hurley and Don Donson. And when we met, Riso had, and Hudson had been suggesting that we meet one another. And we thought, you know, who's that? Why would we want to meet one another? But then we did. And we found we had much in common and a great passion for the Enneagram, not just in terms of our own personal work and transformation, which we were clearly both interested in, but that we had shared ways of approaching the information and that we wanted to go deeper and that we wanted to compare and contrast. And David had an incredible expertise that I did not possess at all in terms of understanding computers and the internet. Remember, this is uh, 15 years ago, so a lot has changed. And David was able to uh, initiate some early online uh, chat rooms where we hosted different authors, and then people could be anywhere in the country and get online and learn about the Enneagram, and not just through a book. What we okay. Do so can you uh, continue kind of weaving the story and then bring in how, how tri-types came into focus oh. for you guys, and then um, once you kind of got that idea, how you moved with that idea? Yeah, in, in, in brief, I Catherine had begun doing research projects for her certifications in the 90s. Yeah. And when I met her, I was completely stunned by the level of uh, discovery, really, that she had come across in doing really the only true empirical research that was being done in the, in the field that I was aware of. Um, so around 2000, we started to computerize a lot of this and start to gather more and more data online. We started building uh, Enneagram tests based out mm -hmm. of this research. We started using those tests to confirm more research. So we basically started gathering huge amounts of data in terms of everything from the language use that the, the different types use yeah. to the way that they will go through an Enneagram test. And we started to correlate those two pieces. Um, and we've done that now for over a decade. Uh, and out of those results, certain amazing patterns started to emerge. And Catherine was certainly right. the, the first one. Right, they confirmed one. what I found. Right. I mean, the, the critical thing is that I couldn't quite understand how people could be so consistent and not even know one another. And when I did my first body of research, I asked for pictures, and there was a questionnaire. And I expected some of the words to be consistent by type, but I did not expect people to send me the same pictures from the same magazines. It was so powerful that there was a visual uh, representation. And then the lexicon, right. the word choices, was amazing. And then when I worked one-on-one -on -one with people over and over and over again, 
I found that they used three types and they weren't always connected by a wing or a line and I couldn't explain it but it was too consistent. Then I learned about um, Oscar Great Chaz's family. work with uh, trifix which he had later. It wasn't a part of the first dissemination of the Enneagram and it validated my findings and then I had to know more and then that's where David and I joined forces and he took it online. Actually aspects of it in 1997 were online. I think you the questionnaire was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or even 96. Very early. One of the things that's helped us so much is that so much in the Enneagram field is very heuristic, at least the way it was initially mm -hmm. developed. It was you know kind of very theoretical or observational. Yeah. There was very little to really back up what people were asserting. I mean, some people might do coaching and they had some personal experience, yeah. but the, one of the pieces that's been so helpful for us is to have these tens of thousands of questionnaires correlated to a testing instrument. And yeah. that's allowed us to be able to actually find these patterns that Catherine discovered of tri-type. That, for example, even in your, in your test, mm -hmm. we will see uh, sets of the, the language use that you use mm -hmm. is the language of three different types. Um, and this is so exciting for me because one of the basic tenets of transformation is that we language our world. We literally language forth our world. And mm -hmm. the fact that the Enneagram types were so validated by your linguistic patterning, yeah. and then to bring in the work of the three centers of head, heart, and gut, and to see that you saw these patterns. You saw, th I, I don't know if yeah. this was something you expected, Oh, no, absolutely not. No. I just, okay. I was So just, you saw yeah. that by how people, what people focused on and how they said what they said, you actually saw, without having the preconception, the validation of the model of the three exactly. intelligent types of yes. intelligence. Right. I was just curious as to how the types, what words they would use to describe themselves. Okay. It right. began as just a project for certification. Out of curiosity, I had no expectation that they would choose so many of the same words. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's segue into the particulars. Mm -hmm. um, I think somebody once said, if you really knew a blade of grass, you'd know everything. So uh -huh. let's get to the specifics. I'm going to be the guinea pig tonight. And I'm very excited to share this with you. It's kind of a personal thing. Um, you'll see how penetrating uh, Catherine and David's way of looking at me is and I've done a lot of work on being aware of myself and I can honestly say that I asked Catherine a couple of weeks ago at lunch I said if you knew nothing else about me nothing about my history nothing at all but you just knew my tri-type and you knew the order of uh, in my particular case the the priorities what could you say about me and she spoke for like 90 seconds and she she in the best way she nailed me I mean it was so it was so honoring my uniqueness but without limiting me and that's one of the beautiful things mm -hmm. for me about this work is because one of the challenges we all have in along the spiritual path is how do we honor the uniqueness the unique love that we are without having that go to our ego without having that be an argument for separation without having that be an argument for better than worse than judgment right wrong dominate, avoid domination, justify yourself, invalidate others. How do you have that uniqueness be a doorway to the whole, to, to the love, to spirit? And, um, you know, to me, that's, that's, that's the beauty of what the work here has to offer. So I'm going to just lay myself bare here <laughs> as a guinea pig so that it, the things we're talking about can come to light. And... Uh, Particularly, I want to focus on uh, the blind spots of my particular type and also focus on the 
the strengths and the talents and the gifts of my type. And I think you'll really get a flavor for the work. Well, the, the first thing I'd want to add to that is that David was able to actually create the Enneagram cards based on those word choices. And then we were able to give people this testing instrument that had the images and the keywords. And in your case, I'll never forget this because David very much wanted to keep it simple because to have to even create the framing, wire framing is technically, I'm learning these things, it's not my nature. But anyhow, uh, what was needed to be able to set it up on the test online, and I said, I really want to know the top choices of every time we give them the cards. And he, and he said, why? No, that's, that's not critical. And I said, it's going to be critical later. I don't know why or how. Is that like when you go to the optometrist and they say, <laughs> is this clear or is this clear? <laughs> oh, this clear? Okay. Now that'll be the new standard. Now is this clear or this clear? <laughs> and then eventually they get it. I drive them crazy. Yeah, there's pretty a much. Of that. You know? <laughs> I mean, the, way, the way our test works, we definitely yeah. will get to interpreting yes. you, but it's, yeah. there's a couple interesting pieces. We, uh, we were, one, we worked with an MIT PhD programmer to analyze our data. And he was able to cor he was able to validate what we had found. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> with our test, we basically give you the same test four times in a different order. But what's so interesting about that is to see how consistent it is how the person goes through the test. And we had no idea when we built the test that that would in and of itself would reveal so much. Part of which reveals tri type. So maybe we can take a look at David's. Yeah, and the power of comparing and contrasting. Right. So what because David was willing. I w was able to get the six cards, and we call it the Ennea spread, and that's the dominant time every time you were given three cards. And in your case, your top two cards were type four. And whenever you have a pattern, it indicates that that's a higher probability that you are that type. There are false positives, right. but we look at more than that. And we didn't understand how critical this would be either. Uh, in your particular case, you also have two seven cards and two one cards. It's one of the few tri-types where you could actually have that pattern because of what the types are um, compared to. So when I see something like two four cards, two sevens, and two one cards, I'm going to think potentially that you might be that tri-type. But we also have the inquiry on your potential tri-type where we asked in a different order and you did choose the same three cards. So then let's look at the words because it's the lexicon that validates or uh, further elucidates what type you are. Some people might have three different dominant types. In your case it remained the same. That increases the probability. Now people that know their Enneagram type can make this happen for the most part, but if you really just want to know, you can take the test thinking in terms of what was true for you most of your life, most of the time. But the sentence completion questionnaire, which was the very first questionnaire that I did in 1995, tells us even more. And in your case, when I asked five adjectives for you to describe yourself, you used focused, service-oriented, committed, to excellence, creative, and visionary. Well, right now I can tell you, because of my experience and in collecting this data together, that anyone that says focused generally has access to three, or a three wing, or a line of connection to three, or they're just a focused person. Ones occasionally will use that word, but the type to use it most frequently is type three. So that's telling me that if you are the 471, that 3 is now showing up. So it's confirming that probability. And when you said service-oriented, well, the type most inclined to say that is the 2. So now I'm getting um, both the 2 and the 3. And you came out as a 4. Now I have three heart type representations. So that further increases the probability that you're a heart type. So this is how it works. It's kind of inductive and deductive at the same time. 
and then um, committed to excellence. Wow, this is such a four word, I can't even tell you. Sevens like it too, but fours love the word excellence and uh, being committed to it. And then the visionary, excuse me, creative also, four and seven and eight use the word creative. Visionary we get with sevens and ones. Fours can as well, uh, but here's your seven showing up mm -hmm. and affirming what we already um, saw with your Ennea spread. Greatest strength, teacher. This is mostly one and four, but anyone can be a teacher, but the types of will actually write it down are one and four. <laughs> and uh, then I ask why, because I'm always looking at what more I can gather. And in your case, you said it uplifts others, and I'm excellent at it. So the uplifting part is also four with three and the seven, both, and even more seven than the four. But when they come together, it's very, very uh, dominant. And you, greatest weakness, uh, sticking with what is not working for too long. That's hard for this tri-type because it's the visionary. And, and David will say more about that. But there's a need to do things well and to have high standards. Then when I said why, you said pride. Now this is two, and so this is the hard issue again, but that's also human nature. Pride is very important to all of us. Color and blue, it's the most common color for men. And just out of reference, it's the fives and sixes that like it the most. Favorite symbol, uh, flower of life and spiral. Now we're back into four and seven, the two coming together. And creature, dove, now this is not so much indicative of a particular type, but often ref represents the um, inspired. Mm -hmm. It can also represent a spiritual focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's see what else would be helpful to you. Uh, you said you need love. That is very common with the sexual one-to-one -one instinct that wants the drive for wholeness and completeness. Also, Let me stop you for a second. also seven. Because uh, we didn't talk about that, so I want to. When we talk about things we haven't talked about, I want to yeah. define it a little bit. Okay. So yeah. there's an overlay, in addition to the things we talked about, when we talked about the enneagram types and we talked about the tri types. There's also another overlay in the matrix called subtypes, which we don't have time to get into, but that's what Catherine was referring to, one of the subtypes. The three types are self-preservation, uh, sexual, and social, uh, in terms of uh, where the focus is. And so we don't have time in this show yeah. to get into that, but that's what she was talking about. You also reference spiritually bold, you reference intelligent and energy, and this is what I see with the um, the four and seven coming together with the one as a driver. So with this combination, you get the visionary. So with with your with your tri-type combination, which Kath and I can both Go ahead. Uh, look at for you, it's the first piece to understand is you. It's a triple idealistic combination, mm -hmm. right? So four, seven, and one are all looking at the idealistic way that things can be, but from three different perspectives. So the four is sort of ideal relationship, one is ideal uh, you know, process or procedure, or, and then seven is gonna be kind of the ideal utopia. So if you happen to be doing spiritual work or transformative work, that would be a really nice combination because yeah. generally that, that type is visionary in terms of that they're able to see possibilities. Um, they're able to see uh, what can be and they, they also mm -hmm. will have a very discerning ability all three of those types are very discerning in terms of whatever field that they're in um, and they're also tend to, they can be very particularly four and seven can be very cutting edge um, the challenge of the blind spot is going to be reconciling that idealism with the practical day-to-day -day reality that 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 the transformation is going to is going to not be as quick as you can see it in your mind. Right. And the, the, the trick is, is to somehow, you know, I keep thinking of that, that saying of, you know, well, you know, what's it like to be enlightened? And they say, well, before you're enlightened, you know, it's chop wood, carry water. <laughs> After you're enlightened, it's chop wood, carry water. 
And so <laughs> I think, you know, with this particular tri-type, the growing edge is, is to recognize that the search for ideal circumstances at times can be unrealistic or limiting or take you out of the, uh, of how everything right now is, is good just the way that it is. You know, it's like right. Byron Katie says, you know, when you argue with reality, you only lose 100% of the time. You know, I have to interrupt because we only have a couple minutes sure, left. Sure, but please. I want to validate that I think one of the things that's really kind of saved me from some of the downsides of this has been that um, in the transformational um, world that I live in, one of the tenets is uh, after awareness, the very next tenet is acceptance and allowing what you perceive to be as it is and allowing your sense of yourself in the moment of that perception to be as it is. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head, you know, I, I, um, I, if, 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 if my ego was running the show, I would be very critical and judgmental. And so uh, to be able to um, transmute that into discernment is really, you know, a saving grace for me. Absolutely. Well, I know we've got about, like, what is it, uh, two minutes left? And so um, I think this little vignette here, uh, it's been my pleasure and my privilege to bear my soul to you <laughs> because yeah, um, I think this gives you a flavor for, um, for the power of the work and how, you know, of course, it doesn't factor in it's like astrology. It doesn't factor in the level of consciousness of the person, but through talking, you can get a feel and of where the cutting edge is and how to help people. So in the minute we have left, is there anything you want to say to the viewers in closing? I would just say that if you understand your tri-type, then you can really accept yourself, as you mentioned, and, and be more understanding of others as well. Yeah, and be kinder. Yeah, I would just say what we're finding is that uh, for people that use the Enneagram or want personal growth, the, the tri-type is greatly accelerating the process yeah, of growth using that Enneagram tool. That's great. And so we'll close with love and peace. Bye for now. Okay. Oh, wow. That was good. You woke up a little.